It's, it's really incredible to be here, and it is uh, such an honor to, uh, to be given the stage to speak to all of you here at the first JupyterCon. Um, I look around, I see a lot of familiar faces, run to a lot of people in the halls, and it just reinforces how many people have worked so hard to make all of this possible. Um, and they've worked on it for, you know, many people have worked on it for over a decade. And I have a lot of thoughts around the technology dynamics um, that kind of bring us to this moment and that will lead us into the future and about all the different possible futures that may lay ahead. Um, but I don't have a lot of time up here. So uh, I'm going to focus basically on talking about one sort of common thing that I see between Jupiter and Anaconda and, um, and what's made them successful and also some of the challenges they face, I think, that they'll face moving forward. So this conference, I think, is quite clear. It, it's sort of an inflection point, right? It's, it's, uh, it, or maybe it shows that we're undergoing an inflection where the technology that we've built is a small community, relatively small community of contributors and innovators. Um, that's really starting to go mainstream. And our community has had the, um, the, the good fortune of being descended from the Python, the SciPy communities, and that's led to, I think, a generally very welcoming and, and friendly to newcomer sort of atmosphere, right? Uh, to to uh, Brett's quote about staying for the community, the Python community is absolutely wonderful. But it's important to keep in mind that many of the newcomers, most of the newcomers to our community have been interested in the code and the technology. And when technologies cross from kind of that innovator early adopter into the mainstream uh, of adoption, that user community that you get, the users are somewhat different. And, um, and the difference, I think, for like the early majority, late majority type of, of users is that the tools they're adopting, they're doing it to get their jobs done, right? They, they're doing it to learn more, uh, move up the career ladder. It's going to enable them to do their jobs better, but they go home at 5 p.m., they go home on the weekends, and they're going to watch TV, spend time with the kids. Um, they're probably not, maybe many of them will, but they're mostly not going to be sitting there on GitHub at 9 p.m. on a Saturday night. And, and I don't mean that as a criticism, right? That's not a criticism. That's just we shouldn't expect our users to, right? And um, so as a developer and innovator community, I think we need to recognize that meeting the needs of that kind of community, that user community, is going to take on a different kind of flavor. And, and in growing Anaconda, watching it go from, you know, a thousand downloads, you know, uh, over the course of a month to now where we have millions and millions of downloads a month. Um, I've definitely seen that transition happening in that user base. And I think that the Jupyter community is, you know, you see the, the picture of the Berkeley class, it's undergoing that same kind of transformation. And it does mean something different for all of us as the community, the kind of early innovator community uh, that created it. And, um, oh, I hit the wrong button, sorry. Um, and that changing demographic, right, it's got real consequences for the technical community. Um, going from, you know, playing gigs in a small band to playing stadiums, you have a very different kind of atmosphere that you inhabit. And this uh, related is actually the commercial adoption of Python in general, and the, the PyData, SciPy tools, and certainly the commercial adoption of Jupyter. And uh, my company, Continuum Analytics, we've been at the crossroads of this since the very beginning, since the founding of the company, really. And so I've got a lot of opinions, more than will fit in a 10-minute uh, uh, time slot. So I encourage you guys to come to my talk at noon today, where I will go into much greater detail about this and have time for Q&A and really have a discussion around it, because I think it's one that, as a community, we need to have. But in this talk, I'm going to focus on one fundamentally important issue. And um, uh, Fernando and I did not coordinate our keynotes, actually. And you can tell, because my issue is the same as his core issue, which is the one of sustainability. Um, and maybe it says something at a meta level that the two of us didn't coordinate, but we're both focused and both interested in this topic of sustainability. Now, in an open source context, uh, for a developer community of open source you know, uh, devs, when you say sustainability, people now start nodding their heads. They understand, oh yeah, that's an issue, right? Um, because anyone who's made a popular open source library, they know that at some point, just putting up with you know, the issues and the triage and then responding to mailing lists, it burns devs out, it creates tensions in the team, does all these things. And more critically, as software gets more and more popular, it passes this critical threshold where um, more of the important activity on you know, net net, the most important activity is not the code itself, but it's things like documentation, um, uh, workshops and tutorials. It's uh, growing and adding new devs to the team. And so the communication and the knowledge artifacts become the more important thing, more so than the feature artifacts, actually. 
So now there's a lot of discussion around this, right? Uh, in recent years, we've had Heartbleed embarrassing the entire technical world. We've had um, the uh, GNU uh, PG project also uh, needing, you know, being sore need of funds. People were surprised when NumPy got its first funding, uh, I think last year or, or maybe it was earlier this year. Um, and uh, now in the Python Pi data world, with NumFocus, uh, we've really been able to step up and address this over the last few years. It's still growing, but it's something that we've really been able to, uh, to take, you know, uh, take some serious action about. And also, I think in the Python, PyData, SciPy world, we're very fortunate because the core of our work, it is actually in the critical path to business value, to analytical value for a lot of organizations. And so you do get funding from NSF, DARPA, all the foundations that Fernando mentioned. We get private funding from a lot of commercial uh, partners like uh, Two Sigma, Bloomberg. And so there's, there's a lot of interest and money flowing into our ecosystem, which is really great. We still have to organize it, which is why NumFocus is so important in this regard. Um, and additionally, because of our heritage coming from the scientific Python community and so many scientists having put their time into all this, it's important that they get recognition kind of in the academic ladder of merit, right? And that's uh, the effort behind open access journals and the citation of source code. All these things are ways to help people who do this out of the love in their hearts actually be able to sustain that effort. But there is another aspect of sustainability that goes beyond what we typically think of, I think. And for me, that's the question of sustaining innovation, right? We built something cool once, got lots of users. Okay, that's pretty awesome. How do we keep doing cool things, right? How do we sustain that innovation and sustain that, that creativity? And that's actually really at the heart, I think, of what's continued to happen here with Jupiter. It's really also at the heart of the energy, the ethos, in the broader PyData, SciPy ecosystems. So when we talk about open source sustainability and we think about it only from the software maintenance and the paying the starving devs angle, um, we're really answering the question of how. But if we want to address the why, for me, that answer has always been around sustaining innovation. And so Jupiter and Anaconda actually both suffer from a very similar misconception that I've seen out, out in the wild. And um, that misconception is that they're just tools. Um, and I take the perspective, actually, that Jupiter and Anaconda are substrates for innovation not just tools. Of course, we use them as tools, right? But they're actually bigger than that. And um, when you're substrate, you get misunderstood by everybody in different ways, right? So by people who are outsiders, who are new to this stuff, right? They'll trivialize it. They'll say, well, the notebook thing, yeah, it's a web front end. Yeah, that's great, but you know, I got you know, Twitter, I got Medium, I have other web front ends I use, it's just a web front end. Or they look at Anaconda and they say, like, well, this is just a package manager. I've got Yum, I've got this other stuff. It's a package manager. Um, and uh, the other way is that if they look a little deeper, or if they don't look deep, deeper, um, they may actually mistake it, mistaken these substrate things for something much bigger than they are. They'll mistake it for the whole mountain, right? They'll think that Jupiter is pandas in Matplotlib, or they'll think that you can only do scikit-learn if you use Anaconda, right? And, um, and that kind of misunderstanding, you know, you can, you can sort of understand it as saying, well, these people are new and, and all this stuff, but that's definitely a common misunderstanding. But insiders, people who are of the community, also can misunderstand substrate. Um, and and the, the misunderstanding there is basically, I think, tied to an underappreciation of how critically important it is to have common framework for the non-sexy stuff, for the baseline things, right? So the Jupyter format, the protocol, the comms protocol, not very sexy, critically important. Anaconda, the conda package format, not that sexy, it's not machine learning, it's not beating anyone at Go, but it's actually critically important as well. And so that critical aspect is that these, these frameworks, Jupyter, Anaconda, they establish this lingua franca that actually allow a network of value to emerge between creators, innovators, users, everyone. And that value network actually sustains a continuous stream of innovation. If you didn't have a, a bazaar, if you didn't have a marketplace where the people who can create and the people who want to consume those innovations can meet, um, you don't get this kind of positive creation of energy. And so, you know, I, I, a metaphor I would use is that you, you have basically a scattered room full of step stools, but none of them get you very high. Uh, and if you actually have some kind of format, these baseline compatibility things, you can actually start stacking them on top of each other and you get a ladder. And that's a very, very important thing. And so the Jupyter Notebook um, is one of these things. I think Legos, Minecraft, they all have that same kind of texture. And so, I think that for the platforms like Jupyter, uh, Anaconda, these kind of infrastructure things, 
Um, and if you actually look broader, right, to Jupiter, to, to uh, Conda Forge, the community starting to pitch in and add to, to these kinds of things, they're really the products of community, of movement, actually, that's driven by a, a belief in the empowerment of analytical thinkers. That's why people do this stuff. That's why they're stacking the step stools. Um, and, and so the thing I would, the, the parting thought, I guess, is that when, the, when we look at the Pi data and the SciPy ecosystems really growing in popularity, really becoming adopted universally, um, we're going to absolutely, there's no question, we're going to revolutionize data analytics and data exploration for many, many years to come. The, the potential is absolutely staggering, and it's going to take a lot of work. But as we're doing that work, we have to, as we participate in that community, it's absolutely critical for us to keep in mind the why, the purpose behind it. And for me, that purpose, that driving purpose, is always been, it's always been about ensuring that this open source value network, um, it remains open, and that it empowers innovation by a global community, uh, absolutely everyone on the planet. Thank you.